Hey, what is up guys? My name is Oleg, this is Bond. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel and like the content, it'd be really cool if you subscribed. I'd really appreciate it. So in today's video, I'm going to do a full review of my Bostock Amphibian. If you remember, I purchased this watch a few weeks ago. I did an unboxing video that can be found on the channel. And now it's time to do a full review. So as you probably know, this watch has a huge cult following online. Many people are almost fanatical about these watches. So why is that? Is this watch any good? Is it all just a hype? Well, let's get into it. All right guys, so here's my Vostok Amphibia. The reference number for this specific watch is 12656. Let's start the review by looking at the basic dimensions. We have a diameter of 42 millimeters, including this crown guard, but excluding the crown. A lug to lug width of 49 millimeters, a lug width of 18 millimeters, and the thickness of 15 millimeters, including the dome crystal. All right, let's take a closer look at the case and go a little bit into the history behind this watch. So we have an all stainless steel case. By the way, thank you guys for leaving your comments uh, on my unboxing video for this watch because I actually wasn't sure if it's uh, fully stainless steel or is it chrome uh, plated brass. It is fully stainless steel case. However, the bezel, uh, this is of course the original bezel that uh, the watch came with is a chrome plated brass bezel and some of you actually mentioned in the comment section below that some people take out the chrome plating take off the chrome plating of the bezel and just leave the exposed brass and that's kind of a new look for these watches i'm not sure how i feel about that but that's something that uh, a lot of people are doing so let's talk about the history behind this watch the watch was developed in 1967 uh, and basically the story behind it is uh, as follows. Uh, of course, back then, Russia, Soviet Union was closed off from the rest of the world. They didn't have access to the same machinery. They, they didn't uh, import or export uh, many of the products. Uh, so uh, the Russian government, the Russian military has tasked um, Vostok and their R&D department uh, in creating a watch that would be uh, able to withstand pressures of up to 200 meters of diving. Now, back then, there were already watches that could uh, go down to 200 meters underwater. However, uh, the Russian government refused to buy the patents, refused to develop the same machinery to copy their designs. They basically said, no, create something new, come up with a solution to this problem. We need a watch that uh, can withstand 200 meters of water pressure. Uh, so what the scientists did was an ingenious design in my opinion. Uh, basically, uh, let's start with the front of the watch. So we have this domed acrylic crystal. The way that it works, it's calculated very precisely. The size of it, the thickness of it, the overall shape of it is calculated very precisely. So the more pressure is applied to the watch, the, uh, the more uh, pressure the crystal will apply onto the case and the tighter the seal will become. Now, of course, at certain depth, the crystal will crack. However, um, these watches have been tested to go to depth well beyond the 200 meters and uh, they would uh, they would stood those pressures. Uh, so that is calculated and measured very precisely to, uh, to do just that without cracking, without bending. Uh, just to seal the front of the case. Now the back is designed in a very similar uh, fashion. So the way the screw down uh, case back of most diver watches work, basically this whole uh, case back is one piece and you screw it in. There is a little uh, rubber ring, the gasket uh, on the case back that as you screw in, gets tighter and that rubber is what seals and prevents water from getting in. Well, the way this case back is designed, basically this portion here where it says amphibia is one solid piece. It's not a screw in piece. It's just a, just a metal part. And this ring, this outer ring, if the camera can focus on it, you can see here, that's the part that's actually screwed in. So uh, you have this case back, below that you have the little rubber seal, the gasket, and then you have this ring that's screwed down. Uh, what that basically creates, it creates again, pr 
pressure and the more pressure is applied on the case back the, the tighter that seal will get again a very genius solution and actually that's why 99.9% .9 of the time you will see amphibia case back is always aligned perfectly because the whole piece is not screwed in it's just the outer ring so they can align it properly before screwing in this outer ring uh, we also have the screw down crown at the three o'clock position now another feature of the screw down crown is the fact that it's very wobbly so uh, a lot of people argue and uh, Vostok themselves argue that this is uh, one of their design features it's not just a flaw in manufacturing what it is is basically the head of the crown is or the crown itself is uh, a little bit loose it's not tightly connected to the stem of the crown and what that does in case the crown is unscrewed like it is right now and the watch is banged against something or you drop the watch it's not gonna bend the stem it's not gonna damage the movement because the crown is very flexible uh, while I have the crown unscrewed let me demonstrate what hand winding sounds like very smooth very satisfying and uh, the fact that it has hand winding is uh, just a testament of how good this movement is so this specific watch here has the caliber uh, 2415 movement which is basically uh, the same as the caliber 2416B movement that you will find with the watches that have a date function. Uh, the only difference between the two watches is uh, between the two movements, sorry, is really just the lack of the uh, date module. Other than that, the two movements are the same, uh, I believe 31 joules. And mine is actually running fairly accurately. I'm getting about 38 seconds plus per day. Uh, to be honest, I, I wish it was a little bit more accurate than that. But at the same time, I know that I can uh, regulate the movement and adjust it if I wanted to. So basically, there are a few different reasons why I went for this specific model, the 120656, as opposed to uh, the sea of other uh, Vostok amphibias that are out there. There are so many different variations of the case, shapes and sizes, the different dial variations, the date versus no date, even different bezels. Uh, you can really have a lot of fun choosing one of these watches. In fact, it took me quite a while to pick one that I really connected with and the one that I really wanted. So what are the reasons why I went for this specific model? Well, first of all, let's start with the uh, strap. So this one here comes on this uh, rubber strap. Uh, they're referred to as Resina rubber strap. I do speak Russian, so I could uh, read up a little bit more information about it. And Resina basically translates directly into rubber. So it's rubber rubber strap. Um, the rubber is pretty soft. I thought it would pick up lint and bond hairs and things like that, but it doesn't. So that's a good positive about it. And the watch actually feels like it belongs on this strap. It feels comfortable and it fits the overall look. Uh, most Vostok amphibias come on the stainless steel bracelet and those bracelets are known for their bad quality. Not the best thing to be known for, but they are known for that. Uh, so that's why I decided to go for the one on rubber strap because if you buy the uh, stainless steel bracelet, you almost expect to replace uh, the bracelet at some point. So the case shape, I decided to go for this 120 case uh, because I like the look of it. I think it looks very nice on the wrist. Of course, I'll do a wrist shot at the end of this video. And I also already have the Vostok Kamandirsky in my collection and the 420 case, the one that's very popular or the 710 case, uh, another very popular one. Uh, they both are uh, too similar to the Vostok Kamandirsky case and I wanted something a little bit different in my collection. I also decided to go for this uh, type of bezel. I like the diver bezel. However, um, this is my very first negative with the watch. So it is a bi-directional bezel, which basically means it rotates in both directions. I do wish it was a unidirectional bezel like in most diver watches. It is also not clicky at all. What it is is basically the pressure resistance bezel. Uh, a bit of a negative, not a huge deal, but something you should be aware of. Another reason why I chose this specific watch, this specific reference is the dial. I love that blue, uh, it plays really well in the sun. I also like the, the contrast between the blue on the Arabic 
uh, numerals for the hour markings and the blue on the dial and also the blue on the writing and the scuba dude so this one uh, of course features that iconic scuba dude dial and i really wanted a vostok amphibia with the iconic scuba dude so i went for this one here my second negative with the watch is the loom the loom on the watch is not great here's the loom shot yeah it's it's a very poor loom especially for a diver watch uh, i wish more loom was applied so what is my opinion and what are my final thoughts on the watch uh, is it actually a good watch is it just all hype is it just a bunch of uh, people that are super fanatical about these watches and that push their opinion and their agenda onto everyone else well in my opinion it's actually a really nice watch especially for the price at 55 dollars that's how much i paid for this one it's virtually unbeatable you'd still get the fully in-house automatic movement you get the 200 meters of water resistance some might argue even more than 200 meters you get the iconic status uh, in the watch community everybody knows vostok watches these watches have been uh, in great depth underwater this watch not this specific watch but vostok amphibia they have been out in the outer space so they are iconic watches they have uh, done it all and they are tough as nails whenever i wear this watch i always feel like nothing can ever happen to it i actually took it with me uh, on a vacation to a lake i went swimming with it i wore it on a car ride to the lake it was about a five hour drive and what i liked about it that the watch is uh, fairly light and fairly comfortable to wear because it doesn't have the stainless steel bracelet like the other diver watches in my collection and at a five hour drive it gets a little bit too heavy uh, for your wrist so i don't usually like to drive um, on long drives with the diver watch this one here was perfect i could just go straight from my car dive into the lake and not have to worry about the watch uh, i also like the fact that i chose the one without the date because uh, of course this is not the only watch in my collection and what i like about it is the fact that i can just take it out of the box uh, wind it set the time and go i don't have to worry about the date change uh, because these watches um uh, the the ones that feature the 2416 uh, b movement the one with the date don't have the quick set date so you have to go there's a little hack but it still takes a, a lot of time setting the date i really enjoy my time with this watch i'm already uh, thinking of some mods that i'm gonna do to it if you don't have a vostok amphibia in your collection i strongly suggest you uh, consider getting one just remember that it does have some shortcomings as i already mentioned uh, the bezel is bi-directional the lack of proper loom and the last kind of negative i guess that you could say it, it does feel almost like not a real watch it feels like a watch from 1960s that has not been changed at all because that's basically what it is uh, this watch the manufacturing process behind this watch has not been changed much since 1967. it very much feels like a watch from 1960s that was made today and finally here's what the watch looks like on my seven and a quarter inch wrist it doesn't look as thick as you would think it just shows you that it's not all about the dimensions it's also about the overall look of the watch a lot of the thickness comes from the domed crystal but on the wrist it doesn't look very thick in fact it looks very comfortable and it feels very comfortable all right guys so that was my review of the vostok amphibia i'm really happy with this watch the watch has really delivered and it wasn't just the hype i appreciate you watching until the end please leave a comment in the comment section below let me know what your thoughts are on this watch and if you were to modify one what would you change what would you modify maybe you already did a mod uh, let me know uh, i'm looking for ideas i already have some ideas in mind maybe i already ordered some parts who knows time will tell but i definitely ordered some parts i appreciate you watching and i'll see you guys next time well, stop.